Laborio Salvatore Barney Belomo is a high-ranking member of the Genovese crime family in New York City. He is one of the fastest rising mafia members in the United States ever to be made, becoming a captain in his mid-twenties. Belomo was considered Vincent Gigante's logical successor as boss of the Genovese family until he was sent to prison in 1996. When released from prison, he was identified as the official boss of the Genovese crime family hierarchy, according to multiple sources. Belomo is the son of Salvatore Belomo, an alleged made man in the Genovese crime family. Laborio Salvatore Belomo is the double cousin of Genovese associate Laborio Thomas Belomo. Their fathers are brothers and their mothers are sisters. This has led law enforcement to confuse their identities on several occasions. In 1997, Laborio T swore in an affidavit that he was guilty of federal charges instead of his cousin Laborio S. He spent a year studying business at Monsignor Scanlon High School in the Bronx, and then a year studying mortuary science. Unlike many mobsters of his era, he dressed in jeans and sweatshirts. Keen to avoid public attention, Belomo only met fellow mobsters late at night in quiet locations. He is the father of three sons and one daughter. He also owns a residence in Pelham Manor, Ethersuff, New York, along with several Bronx-based businesses, including a waste hauling company. At age 17, he was arrested for gun possession and given three months probation. In 1977, at age 20, Belomo was inducted into the Genovese crime family in a ceremony held in an apartment above an East Harlem pizzeria. Mobster Vincent Cafaro had sponsored him into the family, and he now joined Captain Severio Santora's East Harlem 116th Street crew. The crew was involved in illegal gambling activities and labor racketeering within the New York City District Council of Carpenters. Around 1982, Severio Santora became the family underboss, and Belomo took over the 116th Street crew. He moved the crew from East Harlem to the Bronx, the area of the crew's most important rackets. Santoro, also known as Sammy Black, briefly served as the family's underboss. In the late 1970s, he took over as captain of Antonio Buckaloo Ferro's powerful 116th Street crew in the East Harlem section of Manhattan. Santora quickly became one of the most powerful captains in the family. The crew was involved in illegal gambling, bookmaking, loan sharking, heroin trafficking, and labor racketeering within the Carpenters' Union. In 1981, longtime Genovese boss Philip Lombardo went into semi-retirement. Vincent Chin Gigante and Santora were the prime candidates to succeed Lombardo as boss, being two of the most respected and influential members of the family. Lombardo made the Chin the boss, and Santora the underboss. Santora continued as underboss of the family until his death in 1987. At least that's how it looked to law enforcement and the FBI. By the early 1990s, Belomo had become one of the wealthiest and most feared organized crime figures in New York. He was directly involved in the family's most powerful rackets, including the Waterfront, the Javits Center, and the Carpenters Union, and was indirectly connected to powerful heroin traffickers. With fellow capo Vincent DiNapoli, Belomo became the preeminent racketeer in the New York City District Council of Carpenters and an extremely influential figure in the New York construction industry. Growing up in the East Harlem section of Manhattan during the 1950s, DiNapoli was originally associated with the Lucchese crime family. He later switched to the Genovese and became an associate of soldier Vincent Fish Cafaro, front boss Anthony Fat Tony Salerno's top lieutenant. His older brother Joseph is a member of the Lucchese crime family, formerly serving as consigliere. His younger brother Louis allegedly is a soldier in the crew. In the late 1970s, Cafaro sponsored De Napoli for family membership in the family, and he was placed in Severio Santora's 116th Street crew. 
By the early 1980s, DiNapoli had become New York's most powerful labor racketeer, earning himself and the Genovese crime family bosses millions of dollars from extortion, shakedown, bid rigging, and controlling companies. DiNapoli dominated the New York City District Council of Carpenters through his ally, Teddy Maritas. In 1981, DiNapoli, his brother Louis, and Maritas were indicted on labor racketeering and extortion charges in a Racketeer-Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act indictment. DiNapoli allegedly became worried that Maritas might cooperate with law enforcement. In 1982, Maritas disappeared before the trial was scheduled to start. After Cafaro became a government witness, he claimed that DiNapoli murdered Maritas. Later, in 1982, DiNapoli pleaded guilty to lesser charges and was sent to prison for five years. While in prison, his union rackets were managed by his brother Louis and Louis Moscatiello. He later became close to the next district council president, Pascal McGuinness, and the two men continued to enforce a mob tax on all drywall construction in New York. In 1978, DiNapoli established the Operative Plasterers and Cement Masons International Association Local 530 and designated Mosciatello as business manager. He also controlled Carpenters Local 257 through his associates Attilio Batondo and Eugene Hanley. DiNapoli used their positions to extort contractors operating on the east side of Manhattan. DiNapoli would again be convicted and sentenced to prison. His interests in the district council would be absorbed by a close associate, Laborio Belomo. DiNapoli formed two drywall companies during his time with the Mafia during the 70s, Inner City Drywall and Cambridge Drywall. By 1979, DiNapoli and his protégé Stephen Creer started working with SHO, Southeast Bronx Community Organization, an organization created by Catholic priest Louis Gigante, who was the brother of Genovese family boss Vincent Gigante was an organization of low-income housing in the Southeast Bronx that was financed by the Federal Department of Housing and Urban Development. DiNapoli's drywall companies were able to secure construction projects awarded by SECO. By 1980, DiNapoli had secured more than $16 million worth of SEPCO contracts and more than $60 million in municipal contracts with two drywall companies. DiNapoli secretly owned interests in a dozen construction companies, real estate properties, and housing developments. Him and Tony Salerno were the key figures representing the Genovese family in the concrete industry. Along with close associate Edward Halloran, the men grossed millions of dollars, enough for Forbes magazine to place both Salerno and DiNapoli on the list of the top 10 richest mobsters in the nation. DiNapoli secretly owned Cambridge Drywall and Inner City Drywall, which became one of the biggest developers in Harlem and the South Bronx, and received $32 million in city contracts in 1988 alone. In the early 1980s, he became enraged when he lost out on a contractor who made a deal with Gambino boss Paul Castellano. The contractor, Frederick Demetace, became one of Long Island's biggest developers. You're watching the Everything Network. Gigante thought enough of him that in 1992, he named Bolomo as the family's street boss, giving him control of most of the family's day-to-day -day operations. Bolomo demonstrated his power during disputes with rivals from other families, as well as those within the Genovese crime family. In or about 1987, Bolomo won a jurisdictional dispute against Genovese Little Italy Captain Peter De Feo, in which consigliere Louise Manor awarded Bolomo exclusive control over Bronx Carpenter's Local 17, removing all of De Feo's influence. Bolomo was a rising power in the family, in his mid-thirties, and close to the family's leaders, including Vincent Gigante and Venero Mangano. Bolomo was the undisputed leader of the family's East Harlem St. Bronx faction. Furthermore, Bolomo became dominant in the rackets at the Jacob K. Javits Center on the west side of Manhattan by installing crew members in important union positions at the center, including soldier Ralph Coppola, 
and his Genovese associate brother-in-law and Carpenter's local 257 shop steward, Anthony Fiorino. Belomo was also close to Genovese associate Attilio Batondo, who was local 257's vice president and involved in kickbacks from NYC contractors and businesses operating at the Javits Center. Around this time, Genovese boss Vincent Gigante began mentoring Laborio Bellomo to take over as boss of the Genovese crime family. A report by the New York State Organized Crime Task Force indicated that an alarmingly high number of the 100 carpenters that worked at the Javits Center had ties to organized crime, some of whom were made members of one of the five families. These carpenters made $100,000 salaries, and 60 of the 100 had criminal records. One of whom, Vincent Gigante, was the nephew of the Genovese family's godfather. The Javits was controlled through affiliations with labor bosses Frederick Devine, Martin Ford, Attilio Batondo, Eugene Hanley, Anthony Fiorino, Leonard Simon, Fabian Palomino, Carmine Fiore, and Ralph Coppola. To maintain control, Anthony Fiorino, Bellomo's brother-in-law and the local 257 steward in charge of the Javits, once threatened a man's life at a local 257 meeting in 1984, telling him his kids could be hurt if he steps on people's toes. Fiorino was also responsible for funneling tribute payments the Genovese and the Irish Westies mob received from contractors operating in the Javits to the labor bosses and Barney Belomo. In 1990, after Gigante's indictment in the Windows case, Belomo was appointed acting boss of the Genovese family. In 1990, Kenneth McCabe, then organized crime investigator for the United States Attorney's Office in Manhattan, identified Belomo as acting boss of the crime family following the indictment of Vincent Gigante in the Windows case. On June 11, 1996, Belomo was indicted on Racketeer-Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act charges, including the murders of mobster Ralph D. Simone and Antonio Di Lorenzo, extortion and labor racketeering. Di Lorenzo was found shot to death in the backyard of his home in West New York, New Jersey. De Simone was found in the trunk of his car at LaGuardia Airport in Queens, shot five times. Both De Simone and De Lorenzo were murdered because the Genovese leadership thought they were government informants. Belomo's lawyers stated that their client passed two polygraph tests in which he denied killing anyone. FBI agents shaved Belomo's head, looking for evidence that Belomo had used lithium to beat the polygraph machines. In February 1997, prosecutors dropped the De Simone and De Lorenzo murder charges and offered Belomo a chance to plead guilty to extorting payoffs from a construction union and a garbage hauling company. Belomo accepted the deal and was sentenced to 10 years in prison. On July 13, 2001, the imprisoned Belomo was indicted on money laundering charges related to the Genovese family's involvement in the waterfront rackets and control of the ILA. He was accused of hiding money stolen from the ILA's members' pension fund account between 1996 and 1997. Belomo again pleaded guilty to lesser charges, pushing back his scheduled release date in 2004. On February 23, 2006, Belomo and over 30 Genovese family members were indicted on more racketeering charges. Belomo was specifically charged with ordering the 1998 murder of Ralph Coppola, the acting captain of Belomo's crew and his good friend. On September 16, 1998, Coppola disappeared a few weeks before his sentencing on fraud charges and was never found. Government witness Peter Peluso, a former lawyer for the Genovese family, stated that he had transported a message from him in prison ordering Coppola's murder. Some accounts state that Coppola was disrespectful. Others say that he was stealing family profits. Laborio S. Belomo, aka Barney Belomo, the defendant, was, at various times relevant to this indictment, a soldier, capo, and acting boss of the Genovese organized crime family. 
Prior to becoming acting boss of the Genovese organized crime family in or about 1992, he was first a soldier in the family and then a powerful captain who controlled a crew of soldiers and associates based in the Bronx, New York. Bellomo was responsible for, amongst other things, control over labor unions associated with the Jacob Javits Convention Center in Manhattan. He became the acting boss of the Genovese organized crime family in or about 1992, following the incarceration of Genovese family boss Vincent Gigante. In or about 1996, Bellomo was himself incarcerated after being arrested on federal criminal charges filed in the United States District Court for the Southern District of New York. Following his incarceration, and even after being replaced as acting boss, Bellomo retained significant power and authority within the Genovese organized crime family, and he continued to be consulted on and make decisions with respect to the either family's criminal activities. In or about 1997, following his conviction on federal extortion charges, he was sentenced to a term of 10 years imprisonment. His criminal activities included the 1998 murder of Ralph Coppola, a Genovese family soldier and acting captain, as well as his participation in two schemes to obstruct justice, one by conspiring to tamper with a potential witness, and the other by giving false and misleading testimony in a grand jury proceeding. Peluso pleaded guilty to his role in the murder. However, the government had no proof that Peluso had indeed met with Bolomo. With insufficient evidence to press the murder charge against Bolomo, the government offered him a plea bargain for mail fraud in 2007. Bolomo accepted and received one additional year in prison instead of four as his daughter Sabrina gave a tearful plea to Judge Lewis A. Kaplan alongside her three brothers. Due to his imprisonment, he missed her high school, college, and law school graduations. On December 1, 2008, Bolomo was released from prison. You're watching The Everything Network. Daniel Pagano is an alleged New York mobster and a captain in the Genovese crime family who was involved in a famous gasoline bootlegging racket of the 1980s. Born in New York, he is the son of Joe Pagano, a senior Genovese mobster. In 1973, the New York Police Department arrested Pagano for selling narcotics to undercover officers. During the arrest, he was shot in the back by police while leaning against a police car. In the early 80s, he became acquainted with activist Al Sharpton. Colombo crime family former mobster and current YouTuber Michael Franzese allegedly arranged a meeting with Pagano, Sharpton, and another mob associate, who was an undercover FBI agent. The meeting was ostensibly about the mob associate asking Sharpton for an introduction to boxing promoter Don King. However, during the meeting, the associate unsuccessfully tried to enlist Sharpton's assistance in distributing narcotics. After the meeting, the FBI approached Sharpton and allegedly garnered his assistance as an informant against Pagano. However, Sharpton denies this claim to this day. In the late 1980s, Pagano became a made man or full member of the Genovese family. He operated in the Bronx and Manhattan and was close to Genovese Captain Dominic Quiet Dom Cirillo. With the incarceration of Genovese soldier Joseph Joe Glitz Galizia, Pagano was promoted to captain. He oversaw the family's numbers game and sports betting rackets in East Harlem, which were operated by the Pisacano brothers. Pagano also owned a business interest in Third World Records, an African Latino music label in New York. Pagano was indicted in June of 1989 on charges of illegal gambling, loan sharking and extortion in Westchester County and Rockland County, north of New York City. Pagano and his associates mediated disputes between trash haulers in the area, exercised control over a waterfront construction project in Yonkers, New York, and conducted loan sharking activities. Pagano eventually pleaded guilty to criminal usury and promoting gambling. After become Cap Capo, Pagano became the Genovese family contact in the gasoline bootlegging rackets. 
Originated in the 1980s by a Soviet Jewish crime family led by Marat Balagula and based in Brighton Beach, Brooklyn, the scam involved fake transactions of large quantities of gasoline and diesel that defrauded the state of New York out of hundreds of millions in excise taxes. When the New York's Cosa Nostra families discovered the scam, the Genovese and three other families forced Organizatia to pay them a cut of their illegal profits. The families set up a group known as the Association to run the scam. Pagano and his trusted aide, mobster Anthony Palumbo, represented the Genovese interests in the association. In late 1992 or early 1993, Pagano thwarted a proposed murder of a Russian mobster. Palumbo's business partner, Russian mobster Victor Zilber, asked him to arrange the murder of a Zilber employee, Russian mobster Monia Elson. When Palumbo approached Pagano for approval, Pagano immediately vetoed the hit. Pagano was afraid that killing Elson would cause major problems with the organization. In the early 1990s, the FBI and set up a fake fuel company in Trenton, New Jersey, as part of Red Daisy, a sting operation aimed against the bootlegging ring. In February 1992, a suspicious fire destroyed the company facilities. Soon after the fire, a mob associate approached the company owners and informed them that they would have to pay a mob tax to sell the bootleg gasoline. In September 1996, Pagano and Palumbo were indicted on charges of defrauding the government of $77 million in tax revenues. In September 1999, Pagano pleaded guilty to motor fuel tax evasion and was sentenced to 105 months in prison. As a result of his imprisonment, Pagano lost control of many of his former rackets, including the Pisacano brothers' illegal gambling operation. On May 12, 2007, he was released from federal prison. You're watching the Everything Network. Carmine Romano was a New York mobster and captain in the Genovese crime family who controlled the Fulton Fish Market Distribution Center in downtown Manhattan. Beginning in the 1920s, the Fulton Fish Market had been controlled by mobsters. Unloading crews would extort parking fees and kickbacks from out-of-town fish companies. If a company refused to pay, the unloaders would let the fish spoil. Mob employees and mob-controlled companies received special benefits. The market's security force operated a protection racket for retail shops and vehicles located on the margins of the market waterfront. Authorities made some small efforts to clean up the corruption. In the late 1970s, Romano was removed from the leadership of the seafood union for extorting wholesalers and enforcing a cartel. Finally, in 1981, mob boss Romano was shifting control into New Jersey to his younger crew. Herman Weiner took control of operations in New Jersey and was untouched for many years. Later in 1982, Romano was convicted of racketeering and sent to prison for 14 years. However, the Genovese domination of the market continued. Before going to prison in 1981, Carmine Romano tried to intimidate the current non-mob owner of his restaurant into selling it back to his uncle. According to court documents, Romano and associates visited the owner on the morning of January 21, 1981. They began their visit by breaking glasses, smashing all the windows, mirrors, tables and chairs. Food was also thrown around, destroying the coffee and cigarette machines, in addition to yanking the stove out of the wall. Finally, they robbed the cash register and left. Despite this attempt at intimidation, the owner refused to sell it back. In 1994, new mayor Rudy Giuliani launched a campaign to end mob control of the market. Through civil suits and new regulations, the city expelled mob employees and vendors and ended the extortion rackets against honest seafood vendors. The Genovese family retaliated with arson and wildcat strikes, but were unable to stop the city. In 1999, Romano was released from prison and moved to New Bedford, Massachusetts, where he was the owner of high-grade ocean products. In November 2005, the city of New York moved all seafood wholesale operations to a new facility in Hunts Point in the Bronx and permanently closed the Fulton Fish Market. 
Romano died January 28, 2011, in New Bedford. Ralph, the Undertaker Balsamo, is an alleged captain of the Genovese crime family with operations in the Bronx, Manhattan, and Westchester. His nickname, The Undertaker, comes from him owning funeral homes in the Bronx. In 2007, Balsamo pled guilty to narcotics trafficking, firearms trafficking, extortion, and union-related fraud and was sentenced to eight years in prison. On March 8, 2013, he was released. However, in August of 2016, he was indicted along with 45 other members from other crime families and was held in detention until trial. He was again released from prison on July 23, 2018. Balsamo was arrested on April 12, 2022, on racketeering charges. According to an indictment unsealed on April 26, 2022, he and five other co-defendants, including Captain Nicholas Khaleesi, operated a criminal racketeering enterprise since at least to 2011. Balsamo pled guilty to racketeering on February 9, 2023. Balsamo is a member of Balomo's inner circle, and is the possible successor to an administrative position within the family. Born in 1945, Pasquale Pazzi Perello is allegedly the current consigliere of the Genovese crime family. He was a longtime captain who was operating in the Bronx. He owns a restaurant on Arthur Avenue called Pasquale's Rigoletto Restaurant. In 2004, he was found guilty of loan sharking and embezzlement along with Captain Rosario Gangji and was sentenced to 88 months. Patsy was released from prison on April 23, 2008. In August of 2016, Perello was indicted along with Genovese family captain Conrad Ianiello and Genovese family acting captain Eugene Onorfio and Philadelphia crime family boss Joey Merlino along with 42 other mobsters on gambling and extortion charges. In May 2017, he pled guilty to three counts of conspiracy to commit extortion and was sentenced to seven years in federal prison in September 2017. Prosecutors at his trial alleged that in June 2011, he ordered two of his soldiers to break the kneecaps of a man who annoyed female patrons at his restaurant. Perello was released from prison on January 19, 2022. In 2023, he was allegedly promoted to the family's administration, taking over as the family's new advisor. If you haven't already, please take a second to subscribe to the channel, and also don't forget to click on the notification bell, so you'll be up to date on all videos released from the Everything Network. Carmelo, Carmine Pizza Polito, acting captain of the Brescio crew operating in Manhattan and Queens. In June 2005, Polito along with Mario Fortunato were arrested for the murder of Genovese Mafia associate Sabatino Lombardi in November 1994 during a card game. On August 16, 2022, Polito was indicted along with Genovese family soldier Joseph Macario Genovese family associates Salvatore Rubino and Joseph Rutigliano, Bonanno family capo Anthony Little Anthony Pipitoni, Bonanno family soldier Vito Pipitoni, Bonanno family associate Agostino Gabriele, and Nassau County police detective Hector Rosario. The indictment charged the group with racketeering, money laundering, illegal gambling, conspiracy, obstruction of justice, and other charges. Federal authorities allege the group used front businesses in Queens and Long Island to launder illegal profits. In a wiretapped conversation from October 2019, Polito was caught telling an underling that he was going to put a debtor under the blank bridge. Polito was released on $1.1 million bond. Conrad Ianiello, capo operating in Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, Staten Island, Connecticut, Long Island, New Jersey, Springfield, and Florida. 
On April 18, 2012, Ianiello was indicted along with members of his crew and was charged with illegal gambling and conspiracy. The conspiracy charge dates back to 2008, when Ianiello, along with Robert Scalzer and Ryan Ellis, tried to extort vendors at the annual Feast of San Gennaro in Little Italy. Conrad Ianiello is related to Robert Ianiello Jr., who is the nephew to Matthew Ianiello and the owner of Umberto's Clam House. In August 2016, Ianiello was indicted, along with Genovese family capo Pasquale Perello and Genovese family acting captain Eugenio Norfio and Philadelphia family boss Joseph Merlino and 42 other mobsters on gambling and extortion charges. Thomas Figgy Ficarota is a captain operating from Manhattan and Brooklyn. In 1983, Ficarota was indicted for operating a national burglary ring. The indictment stated that Ficarota was a made member of the Genovese family and paid tribute to Genovese member Thomas Greco. In 1985, Ficarota served five years in prison for extortion. In 1986, Ficarotta was convicted of RICO offence involving Local 8114. In 1995, his son Tom Ficarotta was identified, along with other in the Javits Centre, Carpenter's racketeering investigation of Anthony Fiorino.